You know who I don't trust no more? Jay Shetty. Because who is this guy really? And how does he have me just believe in the shit that comes out of his mouth? This video isn't about blindly dumping on Jay Shetty here. We are going to look at all of the facts presented in The Guardian and other sources to come to a logical conclusion as to is Jay really the villain here? And we are going to do that step by step. Please do take a moment to consider subscribing to our channel. Our niche involves South Asian social cultural dialogue across the diaspora, podcast interviews, and video shorts. If this is a niche that interests you, hit subscribe. Now, there's a good chance that you know who Jay Shetty is, but you might be surprised by what he actually does to make the big bucks. When I was growing up in London, I had three choices to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a failure. And I ended up at business school, so I guess I was the third. Yeah, those were my three options, right? That was it. There was no fourth option. So according to my parents, family, or the community I grew up in, I'm a failure. Jay Shetty was born in London to a Hindu family, subsequently graduating from Cass Business School. He has been groomed not just to have business acumen, but many of his early acquaintances claim to have seen him in sweats shooting YouTube videos way more than they have seen him in monk robes. Which begs the question, did he approach any monkhood with a business standpoint in mind? Either way, his business acumen is surely blooming outside of the mindset influencer world. Shetty began his career at Accenture working on digital strategy and as a social media coach for the company's executives. His work caught the attention of Ariana Huffington, who hired him to produce videos for Huffington Post about topics such as relationships. Shetty has conducted interviews with a number of public figures. So currently, Shetty is the co-founder of a video production company called Icon Media, along with Alex Kushner. In 2021, Shetty and his wife Radhi launched Sama Team an adaptogenic brand inspired by Ayurveda. And in 2022, Shetty joined a meditation product company called Calm as its chief purpose officer. He is also surprisingly in the ownership group of Angel City in the National Women's Soccer League. He has published two books on top of this, Think Like a Monk and Eight Rules of Love, which made the New York Times bestseller list. Add to this a very successful podcast interviewing A-listers to millionaires to former current presidents, and you have a man that has won the art of networking like a champ in just 13 short years. For a long time, Nimi and I, just like many others, have known that Jay's initial stint on social media started with ripping off motivational quotes from other creators and influencers without giving them due credit. South Asian news outlets like The Juggernaut have been pointing this out as well. But post that revelation, Jay Shetty has taken care to ensure that his team credit their sources on their social media platforms. In fact, one could argue that copying jokes and formats of popular reels is a very popular way to grow your following on TikTok and Instagram. So why is everyone specifically angry at Jay for doing the same? Perhaps it has something to do with the obscene growth and success that followed or the unabashed way he promotes himself. I would argue that this is probably the lesser of the evils that have come to light. The Guardian's John McDermott was commissioned to do a profile on Jay Shetty for Esquire, but during the course of his research, he noticed many inconsistencies which prompted him to do this deep dive. According to Jay himself, in many of his interviews and write-ups, Shetty met Gauranga Das, a monk invited to speak at a school on selflessness and living a minimalist lifestyle. And this monk was invited to speak. And I kind of just went because one of my friends forced me to. At that time, I was listening to CEOs and entrepreneurs and business people and marketers who, who I thought that's what I was aspiring to be like. And then I hear this monk and he captivated me like no one had ever captivated me before. It was like staring at the most beautiful woman on the planet. Shetty spoke with Gauranga after his talk and followed him for the remainder of Gauranga's lecture circuit around United Kingdom. That changed his life, apparently. In business school, he turned down lucrative offers from prestigious companies, shaved his head and hit the road. For three years, he traveled across India, Europe and England living as a monk, studying, meditating and building food and shelter programs for those in need. He was definitely in love with what he was doing, but he knew that it didn't scale. After graduating, he supposedly forgoes a life of material success to live as a monk 
And after three years of this lifestyle, he has another revelation, not to live humbly as a monk, but to share his wisdom to the world. Now, while the story seems quite opportunistic, according to The Guardian, people close to Jay Shetty questioned the quite dramatic presentation of his story. What's interesting to note is that long before the Guardian article even came out, several people came forward to point out the discrepancies in Jay Shetty's backstory. While this article does tell us that not only was his spiritual education not in India and rather in a small town outside London called Watford, he actually grew up in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which is more commonly known as ISKCON and infamously in the US as the Hare Krishna movement. ISKCON was actually started by Swami Prabhupada, who was born of on September 1st, 1896 in Calcutta. In 1959, after his retirement, he decided to become a monk and started preaching Vaishnavism, which is a form of Hindus, denomination rather. And in 1965, when then US President Lyndon B. Johnson passed the Immigration and Nationality Act in 1865, he made use of it to enter the US as the first Hindu preacher. It was quickly adapted to the Western ethos, and you saw that the preacher granted both men and women the opportunity to be priests in rituals of worship, whereas in traditional Hinduism, this was a role that was largely reserved just for men. And by incorporating chanting and dancing into its core, it was really successful in attracting non-Indians. Unlike other forms of Hinduism, you see that devotees of Hare Krishna movement believe themselves to be monotheistic. Regardless of religion, everyone is praying to the same God. And that also made it a lot more palatable for individuals to look into. So um, as the movement really grew in the US, we see how uh, many people who were really drawn into it from different cultures, uh, after the leader passed away in 1977, things really went south. It wasn't to say that it wasn't a controversial ideology before that, because uh, Swami Prabhupada himself had been subject to a lot of criticism for his racist views against black people, discrimination against individuals coming from lower castes, anti-Semitism, and so many other things. However, what happened was after his death, he had passed on the torch to a Baptist raised man who then founded another settlement of sorts. It was a, a new Rindalan, which was one of the largest centers by 1980. And much later, what came out was a lot of stories and allegations of abuse by women and children against many individuals in the organization. Let's look at whether Jay Shetty is running an MLM. The short answer is yes and no. Jay Shetty runs a certification school, which The Guardian found to be run under common principles of an MLM, where their life coaches earn based on commission per sales under a professional title called an enrollment advisor, while having graduated from the same school themselves. But where it falls short to having to qualify as an MLM is that this school's success doesn't depend on these sales. The school charges $7,500 in sign-up fees to train their students and certify them to become life coaches. I have to add, there are multiple brands and schemes claiming to train people and help them to set up their own mindfulness business by charging them exorbitant fees. So Jay isn't the first one. A former friend of mine unfortunately got scammed by another such school when she was in a vulnerable state Age of looking for hope, Jay isn't necessarily the pioneer of the scheme. It clearly looks like their main clientele are vulnerable individuals looking to do something good in the world while believing some testimonies of people making big bucks in the process. It's primarily marketed as an investment rather than a course fee. Upon further looks, The Guardian found that their accreditation claims of being recognized by Ofqual are false and any other universities claim to be linked to this school, like the University of Derby or Buckingham, all deny link to Shetty School and stated that they were very unhappy that they were included in the website. Jay Shetty's former girlfriend, Lila, a practicing psychotherapist for 13 years in the UK, fears that her life coaching school provides inaccurate and potentially dangerous mental health guidance. Let's see what she has to say. Truthfulness, can we uphold integrity and honesty to protect our society and to protect our community members? 
Jay Shetty has claimed that he did behavioral science at Cass University and for the entire time that he's developed his certification program in coaching, he has claimed this online. He has recently, however, changed this to management science. Now, that is the truth. Uh, I was with him actually when he was at university. He did business and management science. Um, and so the fact that he did behavioral science has been a misrepresentation of his background and qualifications. Question seven, will I be learning the exact coaching strategy and tools used by Jay Shetty with his coaching clients? The answer is yes. As a Jay Shetty coach, you'll be learning the exact same strategies I use with my clients in my coaching practice. On his coaching sites, he does actually teach other students. He claims to be teaching 11 modules out of the total modules. Like I said, we've got someone who doesn't have the qualifications that he claimed. He misrepresented his degree, hasn't done or hasn't shown online that he has done life coaching himself, meaning trained in life coaching. He has his own claims that he developed some sort of methodology from his time in India. I think there is absolutely zero excuse to interfere with a person's mental health or their physical fitness or their physical well-being unless they are doctors, licensed professionals, and even in those cases, they are not promoting products or advising you through social media. One might wonder if there is a tiny bit of a god complex at play here. In all honesty, I have to say that I love the premise of the book, I love his podcast, but I think there is definitely a different way he could have gone about this whole thing. There is no excuse for lying. There is absolutely no excuse for marketing yourself in the way that you have marketed yourself. Do I think he could have gained the success without having gone into health and wellness and just kind of becoming this sort of MLM Hollywood insider sort of gimmicky person? Yes. If you look at some of his competitors like the host of Diary of a CEO and the way he goes about building his business, I think Jay could have done that very well himself. I don't know why he had to bring Hinduism and monkhood into this whole thing, but clearly that's how he decided to start his business. There is an advantage to being Indian where you have this air of being mysterious or from a land where people go to for life advice or revelations. And he clearly has capitalized on that, especially among the Hollywood crowd. Now, what I don't understand is why go out of your way to lie about the duration of your monkhood? Why not even just, if this was your plan all along and if you were so inspired that one day this is what you would do, why not just go and get the appropriate qualifications? Why not actually do a service for three years? Why lie about it? I'm not going to hate on how he makes money through his books or his podcasts or interviewing. Quite honestly, I think those are very harmless consequences to this whole story. But what is scary seems to be this recent pivot to healing and well-being and wellness, not just with their tea brand, but I have seen his wife Radhi on so many platforms promoting these shoes, for instance, and a lot of other wellness products where there absolutely seems to be a risk in having to promote these things where a lot of people consider you to be a reliable source. It seems to be one of those areas where, for instance, the shoe brand that she's promoting here, many doctors have spoken out about how these type of shoes, the ones that do not support your heel well enough, are not good. For heel and arch support, over time, going barefoot can cause your ligaments to become lax, specifically weakening your plantar fascia. That's the long band of tough tissue from heel to the base of your toes. It weakens your muscles and arches too. This can lead to overpronation and the complications of that, like painful knees and hips. And when you're barefoot, you overload the forefoot, leading to a Achilles tightness over time. And that's why shoes like Vans or Converse are the worst for your foot health because they've got inadequate support. Going barefoot is a hell no for people with diabetes, people with flat foot, or those who overpronate, which is basically over half the population. Otherwise, look for a shoe that's wide fitting with a deep toe box and a robust sole. So why exploit people to pay for falsely marketed wellness coaching when the reality to success has nothing to do with what is taught in your school, but all about the algorithms, timing, networking, and of course the charm and the oratory skills to match. Instead of answering the why over here though, it's our job to tell you it doesn't matter because it isn't right. Oh, and I kind of checked to see how this expose has affected Jay Shetty, if people were coming for him in the comments. He 
he clearly has a very good team working behind the scenes he seems to be continuing to post on his instagram and he seems quite unaffected by it and hasn't really addressed any of this